My name is Henrik Zetterberg. I'm a professor of neurochemistry here at UCL and I've been working with Wolfson since 2012. Uh, my research focus is fluid biomarkers for neurodegenerative diseases in general, but with some focus on Alzheimer's disease. There have been a lot of research the last few years on this. So we have developed fluid biomarkers for cerebrospinal fluid, but that requires a lumbar puncture. It's a little bit hard to do, at least in population-based settings and in people who are asymptomatic. So we have uh, been working quite hard on developing very sensitive assays that make it possible to measure uh, the, the interesting proteins in blood samples. And the most promising one was um, uh, developed here uh, and evaluated here, and that is neurofilament light, which is a biomarker of neuronal loss, neuronal degeneration. And the second most uh, promising, I think, is actually beta amyloid, which is the protein that forms clumps in the brain of Alzheimer's disease uh, pa uh, patients. And th there, th the results are a little bit less uh, promising, but there is a signal in blood, and I think it will be possible to make sense out of that signal in a population-based setting in preclinical Alzheimer's disease, uh, especially if we take it into account together with neurofilament light and perhaps some of the tau markers we are working with in blood. So I think a lot of the, the uh, a lot of the problems with lack of repli replicability is that we have been measuring proteins uh, and other biomarkers at concentrations just where the variation of the assays uh, is the highest. And that makes the data uncertain. And the typical thing then is that some research groups report a finding, a significant association. It's just on the limit of significance or with very large numbers. And then people try to replicate with these assays that do perform just at the limit of what they, 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 they can do. And then you get these types of um, studies where you can't replicate the findings, really. But if you develop assays that are very sensitive and specific and really measure the analyte in a predictable uh, manner, uh, the way you want it to be measured in, in the sample, then I, I am sure we will, see, uh, um, we will start to see replication after replication. And we will sort of um, move this field towards a couple of solid blood-based biomarkers for neurodegeneration. And neurofilament light is, is such a marker. It has been replicated during the last two, three years in many, many studies. And plasma A beta is getting there. Plasma tau is getting there also. So it, um, to me, it, um, five years ago, I was not that hopeful that this would work. But uh, I think this is going to work. And then, for example, if a general practitioner comes uh, has a patient with, uh, who complains about uh, perhaps subtle memory problems, I feel like it's, it's a very reachable goal now that the GP could send off a blood sample for analysis and then get advice on whether to uh, send the patient for further evaluation. I think uh, that is not a challenge. I see it as an advantage. Uh, so, uh, but this is a common criticism against neurofilament light as a biomarker. It is not disease specific, but I think that's great uh, because then this could be a screening test so that it will never tell if a patient has a certain uh, neurodegenerative disease, but it will tell if there is neurodegeneration uh, or neuronal injury, actually. It doesn't have to be neurodegeneration. So it could be a minor stroke, it could be cerebrovascular uh, disease, it could be neuroinflammatory diseases that injures, that injure ax axons. Uh, so so um, I see this as a big advantage, because then one could have it as a screening test and, and continue with more specific tests, and of course the clinical evaluation and the medical history and neuroimaging and all those things we do. But it could be a first pass. Um, and then it could also be, um, which I think is an exciting uh, use, uh, to use it as sort of a general biomarker for treatment efficacy. So if we have, irrespective of, of um, uh, disease and uh, therapeutic intervention, if there is neurodegeneration as a component of that disease and the drug is aimed at reducing neurodegeneration, neurofilament light should normalize or at least drop a little bit uh, and become more age uh, normal. So, um, so I, I, I wouldn't want to address the issue with the disease unspecificity. I, I think it's a good thing. More validation, uh, it, that is always the case in clinical translation. And it's, um, it may sound a bit boring actually to, 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 to do all that work, but it's extremely important. 
and a lot of things are happening as we speak. Um, so for example, for Neurofilament Light, we have formed a, a consortium uh, in collaboration with the International Federation of Clinical Chemistry and Laboratory Medicine, where we will develop a reference material for neurofilament light, then um, biosamples with known absolute concentrations of neurofilament light that can be used as calibrators for other uh, commercially available assays. And by having common calibrators like this, we can achieve um, standardization of the measurement if we also have a good reference method to measure neurofilament light. So uh, validation, uh, analytical valida validation and standardization with reference materials and methods, that will be very important. And then also more studies uh, across the globe in cohorts with different forms of neurodegenerative diseases and in different stages. So that we know, learn when the biomarker becomes abnormal, if it plateaus at an abnormal level, if it goes down or up with disease progression and things like that. And ultimately, we need to know what happens um, in response to successful treatment, which we are lacking uh, today for Alzheimer's, for ALS and for frontotemporal dementia. But we have started to see breakthroughs in that um, field too. For example, spinal muscular atrophy, which is a pediatric neurodegenerative disease. Uh, there, there is an antisense-based therapy that really saves the lives of these kids. and. Um, now, it might sound a bit strange, and you will hear that I'm a lab physician, but the biomarker normalizes. Uh, the clinicians do not need the, the biomarker because they see that the kids are much better, get much better. But to me, it was, of course, that's wonderful, but it was also cool to see the biomarker change. So I hope we will see this in Alzheimer's, frontotemporal dementia, Huntington, ALS, Kreuzfeldt, and things like that.